Guys, today is a special day. It's Bahar's favorite recipe, which is bulgur pilav. Yes, it's bulgur pilav. Bulgur pilav is actually pilav we eat at least six times a week and usually much more, either in the form of rice or bulgur. But bulgur pilav, when it's done greatly, it's heaven on earth. You don't want anything even beside it. By itself, it's just so beautiful. And today I'm going to give you that recipe. It's soft, it's fluffy, makes you feel full for a long time, which is something that we crave in a lot of foods. So first, we should start with the type of bulgur. When you go to a store, you'll find different sizes of bulgur. And each size serves for a purpose, like the big ones, like this one. We have had smaller and bigger versions of this. It's good for pilau, it's the biggest ones. Then we have these smaller ones, uh, more cracked. This is for kısır, and we have the recipe for kısır. It's one of the most delicious things in the world. If you like Middle Eastern food, you should definitely try it. And then we have even the more smaller one, and it's for köftes. We make meat balls with it, sometimes not meaty. We make it with deliciously watered and it's like soup or stuffed. Inside there's meat, outside it's crunchy. It's so beautiful. Hope we'll do those one day again. These are the three types. Today we are going to use this big type and make the bulgur pilav. And the recipe that I'm going to do is not a recipe that I have created. It's a recipe from my father and from his grandfather and probably from his grandfather in the middle of Anatolia, around Cappadocia, where our family used to live. And there was nothing else but wheat. And wheat is great for the times of famine. And if you have one big sack of bulgur, you can go on for so long. And it doesn't go bad. So unfortunately, the world is get getting through hard times and famine is again on the table for many people in many countries. So this bulgur is very good in that sense also. So keep in mind, why is bulgur different? than the whole wheat. When it's in the form of bulgur, it doesn't go bad for even longer times. Turning wheat into bulgur is also a form of preserving. You'll see to this recipe, the bulgur is gonna come almost last. We start with, of course, the onions. Onions is going to give this pilav its dimension, tanginess, softness, sweetness, all together. And it's going to be all because of these lovely babies. So we have two full onions and I'm going to cut them and dice them actually. My onions are ready and I'm crying. You can make it in a deeper or a shallow one like the pirinç pilavı, but for bulgur we don't need that shallowness. But for you to see it better, I want to make it in a shallow one. First, I'm going to add two tablespoons of olive oil. In the old days, this was just butter but I like the taste of the olive oil with bulgur. And I'm going to add one big tablespoon of butter as well. The butter works in two ways. When we first start, it has to melt and start to brown a bit. And this time is the time where we should add the onions. And also sometimes butter adds creaminess. So when we are going to make a dish, it could be pilau or it could be potato meal. At the last moment, we also add some butter for the creaminess, for the texture. In Turkey, we call this killing the onion. Ah, but she's killing me right now. As you know, a lot of places in the world, not many rain fell. And when onions do not get their rain a lot, they become edgier. While my onions are here, I have four cloves of garlic. You can even have more. I'm just slicing them because I like their visual existence in the pilau. They give the taste here to the whole pilau. Garlics cook much faster than the onions. So after cooking the onions for several minutes, I'm adding the garlic. Now it's time for the pepper and the tomato paste. In Turkey, especially tomato paste gets into everything. As you know, the ripe tomatoes carry in itself the umami, the fifth taste, which makes all the other tastes higher. So it's not a surprise that in every dish, some kind of tomato gets in. Because what she does is making everything taste better. Similar thing happens in pepper, but not as strong because the umami, the glutamate is less. We have the recipe on the channel for the pepper paste, but if you don't have these in your home, you can add like 200 milliliters of tomato puree, passata, 
all would do. Now I'm going to add two tablespoons of tomato paste and two tablespoons of hot pepper paste. <coughs> <coughs> Hello, COVID. Uh, this doesn't have to be hot, again, to your taste. This is called beating the salsa, beating the pepper paste and tomato paste. What I am doing is making sure each part of it gets her share of the heat. Now, time for bulgur. We don't wash bulgur. Some people do, but I believe it loses the taste. So two, this is not cups, but I'm going to write the measures down. We have these glass measures. Two and a half glasses of... Which makes two cups. Around two cups, yes. We have just like two of these, and when you think about it, how many people would be full with this? You'll see. My bulgur is changing its color, looking even better. And now it's time to add the carrots. I have just one carrot with the back of my knife. I scratch the carrots like this so that I don't lose much. I just lose this. In Turkey, unfortunately, 54% of the vegetables goes to the bin. We throw away our vegetables more than we eat them. This is a small carrot, so I'm going to use the whole. But if it's a bigger one, use half. The carrot gives this pilau a very sweet taste, very nice. And also, I am going to add the herbs and the chickpeas. I'm not going to throw away the akofa, but the valuable water. Now I'm making meringues after your suggestions, guys. I'm going to use all these chickpeas and add it to the pilau. If you don't have it, still it's going to make a great pilau. The herbs are really important. The most important one is the dried mint. It's a whole tablespoon, a teaspoon of thyme, black pepper, now, also, we have red pepper, but from as me coughing, it was a very hot salsa. So I'm not going to add red flake pepper. If your salsa is not hot, add a teaspoon of red flake pepper. So a teaspoon of salt. Salt is very important because bulgur gets a lot of it. Now, I'm going to let the herbs get their share of the heat before I add the water. Here it comes. Now, as you can see, this covers the pilaf, but this water is not enough. We're going to pass it, as my father would say, one finger higher than the rest of the stuff. So it's also time to add a teaspoon of more butter, but this time the butter is going to slowly melt. As you can see, it looks like a soup now, but the bulgur is going to suck all the water and it's going to grow. Now what I have to do is I have to turn it to the lowest heat and let it to simmer. 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the type of the bulgur, this is going to be cooked and you can taste it time to time. And at the time, I want to ask you, if you like this video so far, please press like and also leave us even one word comment. This is how the word spreads uh, with your supports. And we're just like a new channel and trying to grow. Your help would be wonderful. It's about 12 minutes right now and I want to show you it sucked all the water and when you, we look at it like from the bottom on the normal pilaf, on the rice pilaf, when you dig a hole no water should be at the bottom but for this bulgur a little water is good that's what we like what I'm going to do is now mix it but not like mixing it very hardly but just making sure all the things that was collected on top is now inside giving the flavor as you can see that two glasses of bulgur became huge this is again bereket berakat in Hindu I guess and in Pakistan similar words what I'm going to do I turned off the heat I'm going to let it rest for another 10 minutes and then it's going to be ready to eat. What are the side dishes of bulgur? There are two main side dishes that we're going to eat together with. It's going to be yogurt and a lot of pickles, pickles of unripe melon, carrots, and hot peppers. Now we have the yogurt recipe, pickle recipe, and pilaf recipe. Now you have all the meal. <laughs> What does this 
cloth do, this clean cloth. It takes all the extra moisture away and making our bulgur pilavı even greater. And that waiting lets the taste sit, find their right place, let's say. For me, the most difficult part of this dish is the waiting part. <laughs> and the thing is, like some people wants each bulgur to be individual, but what my father says, it has to like be watery and when you press it together, it has to get into a shape. Now, I want everyone to see like, this is a whole bulgur here and look how much we have more here. Wow. And uh, don't worry, like there are five people here. It will be our lunch and it will be so fulfilling. But what we do in Turkish food, we eat this as also a side dish with almost everything. So what happens is you eat the carbohydrates, you eat some proteins, you don't get filled with like 200, 250 grams of meat. That's also unhealthy for us. That's also a big imbalance for the world as well. So, Bahar, are you coming? Of course. Now I have my new plates. These are handmade from Bursa. This is like pre-Ottoman time Selçuk designs and colors. <laughs> and today when I told my mom I'm going to make this pita, she said, Rifika, sometimes we don't put carrots in, but you should definitely put carrots in. It makes it sweeter and very nice. Yogurt? So, yogurt, yeah, in the middle. And now, what I do sometimes, this is something Refika does, is I put some pickle juice. Yes, I want that too, please. I learned it from you. This is not traditional, this is Refika. You should try it like that. Heaven on earth. Nothing can beat this. Why is it so nice for you? It's like my childhood blanket. Do you feel insecure? Get your very own security blanket today. So guys, this is it for now. Hope you enjoy this video. Hope you like the recipe. It's very easy, very fulfilling, good for the world in many terms. Hope you try it and enjoy it. Take great care.